The American Coming of Age film, Summer of 42, is actually based on the memories of screenwriter Herman Rauscher, also known as Hermie. In 1942, during summer vacation, he spends two weeks on Nantucket Island off the coast of Cape Cod. It's there that he embarks on a one-sided romance with a young woman named Dorothy whose husband has gone off to fight in the Second World War. The film is directed by Robert Mulligan, who is famous for To Kill a Mockingbird. It stars Gary Grimes as Hermie, Jerry Hauser as his best friend Oski, and then there's Jennifer O'Neill, who plays the mysterious woman Dorothy that Hermie becomes involved with. Now stick with me a little bit later on in this video because I had the distinct pleasure of actually talking to Jennifer O'Neill for about 30 minutes the other day. And I have to tell you, she was an absolute pleasure to talk to. Almost never do I get to talk to any of the actors or actresses that I talk about in my videos. But this was a complete and distinct pleasure. We'll talk about that in just a little bit farther down in the video. Now, after the film was completed and released to theaters, Herman Rauscher got a flood of letters saying that they were the real Dorothy that he had spent time with that summer. Out of all those letters, he was able to recognize the handwriting as that of Dorothy. And she went on to say that she had been worried for 30 years about what she had done to his psyche. She ended the letter with the ghost of that night 30 years ago, or better left undisturbed. He never really learned what her last name was, what her life was about. The only thing he knew was that it was postmarked from Canton, Ohio. Now, Herman Rosher admits to moving the order of certain events around, but the movie itself is an accurate depiction of the events that took place that summer of 1942 on Nantucket Island. He didn't even change anyone's name. He began writing the screenplay as a tribute to his friend Oski, who had been killed in the Korean War. But midway through writing it, he realized that he wanted to make it a story about Dorothy, who he had, in fact, neither seen nor heard from since their last night together, as depicted in the movie. Now, filming on Nantucket Island was completely impossible because it had been modernized so much in 1970. So the production found a location in California. Mendocino, California was the location that they shot as Nantucket. The shooting schedule took eight weeks, during which it said that Jennifer O'Neill was slightly sequestered from the rest of the cast. And this was done to kind of ensure the sense of awkwardness was still there. They wanted her to keep a distance from the boys. The production ran smoothly and it finished on schedule. After the production was complete, Warner Brothers just still wasn't completely sold on the film. So they asked Rauscher to adapt his script that he had written for the film into a book. Yeah, this is one of those odd instances where the screenplay was the first thing to happen and then the book came along. It's usually the other way around. So he sat down and wrote it in three weeks. Warner Brothers released it prior to the film to build interest in the story of the movie. That book became a national bestseller so that when the trailers premiered in theaters, the film was billed as being based on a national bestseller, despite the fact that the film came first. The film was made on a budget of about $1 million, and it made $32 million for Warner Brothers in U.S. box office release. Now you can see a small piece of this movie, the scene where Hermie helps bring home Dorothy's groceries. This appears on the TV in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Stanley Kubrick is notorious for sticking things in the background of his films that make it just a full-time job looking for the Easter eggs in the background. The film soundtrack consists almost entirely of compositions by Michel Legrand. The main theme for Summer of 42 won a Grammy Award held in 1972 
for best instrumental composition. With the exceptions of the beginning credits and the end credits, Legrand used his music only around the scenes that involved Dorothy and the scenes that showed Hermes' romantic feelings towards Dorothy. Originally, the film was banned in Ireland when it was first released in 1971 because the Hermie character is shown going into a drugstore and buying contraceptives. Contraception was banned in Ireland in the 1970s until 1980. The film was eventually released theatrically in Ireland in 1980. Now the telegram that sits on Dorothy's coffee table at the end of the movie lists her married name as Walker. It also gives her address as 210 North Corey Street in Bangor, Maine. And it reveals that her husband was a member of the U.S. Army Air Corps and was killed in action over France. There's an actual episode of the 1970s sitcom Happy Days that's kind of loosely based on the summer of 42. And that's where Richie Cunningham, played by Ron Howard, befriends a Korean War widow. Now, the actor that plays Hermie is Gary Grimes. And Gary Grimes had a really short-lived career in the movies and in television. He appeared in only six films and basically retired from show business in the late 70s, with the exception of one episode of Matt Houston in 1983. He lives in Los Angeles. I'm not sure what he does, but he stays kind of out of the public eye. It seems like he's very happy that he made that choice. Now let's talk about the beautiful Jennifer O'Neill. What guy in the 70s didn't have a crush on this girl, and what girl didn't want to look like her? She was on the cover of every fashion magazine. And when she exploded on the big screen, every guy in the world was in love with her. Now, Jennifer's life has not always been a bed of roses. She's been married quite a few times, and she's had her struggles along the way. But I have to tell you, she has come out the other side, and she is a woman that is definitely making a difference in today's world. Let me tell you what she's doing. Jennifer lives just outside of Nashville, Tennessee, and she has a farm there called Hill and Glade Farm. Now, she's always been in love with horses from a very young age, and this has continued her entire life. Jennifer has started a program that helps armed forces veterans and first responders and their families. They help those that have post-traumatic stress disorder deal with life again. They help them and their families reconnect and restore relationships. And this is all done through the therapeutic benefits of horses. They learn to relax and they learn to reconnect. Now you will never hear me on this channel ask anybody to donate a dime to me. I, uh, I'm not one that uses Patreon, but I do believe in donating to good causes. And Jennifer O'Neill has an excellent cause going on here. And we need to try to help her out. I can tell you that this channel is going to donate money to her. And I would sure love it if a lot of my viewers would donate money to this program. Because I firmly believe in what she is doing here. She is helping those that often get thrown by the wayside and forgotten after they have fought for us. I'm going to leave a link in the description of this video that will link you directly to her website. And I would love to see a lot of money roll into her to help her in this cause. Like I said earlier, I talked to her for about 30 minutes. You wouldn't have known that she was a big star and on the cover of every fashion magazine there was in the 70s. She talked to me like I was her next door neighbor. What a great experience it was actually talking to Jennifer O'Neill. Now she also invited me to come by and do some filming at her farm in Nashville. And I'm going to do that in a couple of months. And I'll do an entire video of just that. So keep an eye out for when that's going to come out. At first glance, The Summer of 42 is merely another coming-of-age film. 
where a teenager falls in love with an older woman and lives the summer dream of every adolescent boy. Gary Grimes delivers a strong performance, but the gem in this movie is Jennifer O'Neill. This stunning, beautiful woman delivers a remarkable performance as the suddenly widowed young bride who actually dreamwalks in one night of sexual searching with a local teen. Her performance is so sensual yet innocent. I'd call it a perfect performance from an actress that we saw far too little of during the film. Thank you so much for watching and we'll continue to chase the classics.